G'day, Nathan from Ozaka here, uh, continuing the series of multi-levels in one file. Just uh, wanted to share some stuff about uh, elevations and uh, how that comes together. Now in this de demonstration file that I've been using, I have illustrated that I've actually used an XREF to create the elevations. We discussed how that has some advantages in that you don't have to reselect individual components if you update your model. It does have the disadvantage of having to save and then update, um, but that's a relatively quick process, and then updating the individual elevation as well. So updating the file itself, uh, that's reloading the, the XREF, uh, and then updating the actual elevation itself. But you don't have to reselect components because the XREF itself is the selection for the elevation. So here we have the uh, that file where that happens. So we've got the plan XREF in to a second sheet where we then create the elevations. Uh, we could add the text in the first file, but I've added it in the sex file, second file and put it uh, all together as, uh, as I want. Now the layout is pretty much in terms of how I want it to appear in back in its sheet mode. So I've sort of put it close to where it will be uh, finally, so that it's ready to go. You can see I've got some details there. Not many details. I know some of you guys do have uh, lots and lots of detail sheets. Um, sorry. <laughs> this is all only a demonstration file, but uh, actually things we... Uh, construction here is quite simple compared to uh, different places. I have the, the room layouts. Uh, now you can see that these are complete elevations. Uh, you might be some stuff uh, that is uh, created, but generally they, they're straight from the model. And perhaps I can show some of the tricks of those doing those things in another another sheet. But they all come from elevations here. So we've got our external elevations. I've got some, uh, uh, what do we call them, um, subdivisions used here to create um, a bit of depth in the model. You can see that this is a thick red line. You can see it actually there. I've got my line weight set. You can see this is a bit of a thinner line back here. So I've used that to get a bit of depth to the elevations. If we go back to our drawing file, and we can see the thickness in the line. So this is xref back into this file, remembering to make sure you use uh, overlay, not attach, so that the model file doesn't follow the elevation file back to here. Otherwise, we would have a circular reference, and it won't work. Okay, so I said that I set them up uh, pretty much as I would have them. I create a viewport, and we're done. So I've got elevations, then I've got the second sheet uh, set up much the same way. I've got details set up much the same way. S uh, electrical diagrams. This is obviously two viewports. My viewports are almost, they're put on def points layer. I've got a little lisp file that I like. And it actually makes makes the def point layer just a light line, so it doesn't actually pro uh, it's not prominent, but I can just see it if I need to actually click on it. It's annoying if you can't see it at all, but I like to see how the sheets will actually look printing. Uh, you can see that uh, I've got two. I'm using a reflected view, uh, reflected two view. Um, that's not quite. How I'd like them, but I, you know, I've got a, a flaw. Oh, no wonder that's showing up. It's on the wrong layer. Uh, that should be on two floor. Um, there's uh, one other thing that I can show you in my paper space. For my layers, I use for my roof layers. I generally will use a dashed line. You don't have to set it here, you could actually set it in the roof itself, but I use a dashed line for my line type for my roof layer. But in my second floor level, I want to show the downstairs uh, floor roof below. And I want to show it with a light line, but I don't want to show it with hatching. I could show it with hatching. That's another trick, actually. But you go here and you'll see that this is my second floor. So all my second levels are on. My electrical's turned off. My detail stuff's off, but also my first level roof is turned on. So 
where I can see the roof below on my second floor. It's very simple, just do it. You can see the elevation is set. If I go, now how do I get that to show solid line uh, and not a dashed line? Now, we could look at components. Um, you know, I could do something tricky here. Uh, it's, a, it's a roof object, not a slab. I, I rarely deal with slabs, so if you're using slabs, you'll need to look at different questions. But I could actually set how that's displayed here. What I actually do is very simple. I just, you can see that light blue. I actually create a viewport freeze uh, override. And there it is there. Where is it? There. Continue. Continuous line type. And that is line type, VP line type. So I've done a viewport override. And you can, that came in in about 2011, I think. You could do an override to a viewport. That's an AutoCAD thing, not an uh, AutoCAD architecture thing. But it works because my roof is set to just display by block, line type by block, which means it will assume the layer, it will assume the layer unless it's overridden. I don't do that because that would actually override it in every other viewport. I just let the layer control and I control the layer in this viewport. Hmm. Nice uh, little simple control thing there. Uh, looking at elevations, back to elevations, something that I do, I'm going to flip back to another file, and this is a development application, so it's actually uh, ready to go to planning, for planning approval. It's not a construction drawing. What I actually do is use what I call alive elevations. It's not, uh, we know, you know what a live elevation is? It's when you click on a section, uh, section line, and say enable live section. And if you've never done that before, do it. It's pretty cool. Uh, and it can allow you to do some things to uh, isolate portions of the whole model or whatever. Uh, to use that in my system, I would actually have to do that through an XRIP. Here, I to do development applications, I actually use the live model. So what I do is I go in, I create a viewport, and I just simply look at the viewport from the side. Uh, and that's um, just si simply setting your view. I don't use these things, but they're somewhere here, aren't they? Uh, is that them? No, that's your views. Uh, you know what I mean? Just look at the model from the side. Um, I've got shortcut keys that do it. Um, so this is actually looking at the model. You can see everything's there. Um, that wouldn't look very attractive as a printed drawing. So what happens is the viewport is set to hidden, which means when it actually comes to time to printing, it actually hides things. Now, this is probably experimental. There's some things about the display. It doesn't follow the display system. Uh, I actually use little... Actually, before I run out of time, I should do a quick plot and preview so you can see what this will actually give you. There you go. Look at that. It's an elevation. It's not spectacularly tidy. I wouldn't use it for uh, a working drawing. It'd be nice. You can see I've used a whiteout here. I don't actually know what that is. It might be a downpipe or something. Uh, there's a whiteout used to sh cut the bits between walls. So there's a wall here and there's a wall here. You would get a line. There's not actually supposed to be a line there. Uh, let me see a better. There it goes. You can see that the whiteout is used in paper space white out the line that would appear there it's down and dirty it gets the job done quick and easy and back to uh, to the next stage you can see bits and pieces there on my live model uh, at da stage it's it's quickly get it done and move it on if you're looking for productivity this is possibly a good option to to look at um, back to the paper space uh, let's see there's that white out you can see it's actually in paper space if, I'm, if i go into the viewport uh, this is in paper space, so it's just simply, what are these? What are these? I think they're polygons. I've used a polygon set to mask. If you go to the polygon style and set, oh, I haven't even used background mask actually. I've just used a white and a visible ink here. And the other trick.